All right. Well, let's get started. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Engage to Excel webinar, Ask Me Anything uh, about employee recognition. We have a few folks here joining as my co-hosts. We have Melissa Munier, our Director of Marketing. If you could wave and say hello, Melissa. Hi, everybody. All right, thanks, Melissa. And we also have uh, Roy Saunderson, who I'll introduce in just a moment. But Roy, if you could give a quick hello. You bet, welcome, thank you. Awesome. Um, so first off, we hope everyone is healthy and safe. Um, we recognize that it's a challenging time for organizations amid uh, this pandemic, and we're certainly here for you. Um, I think we have an exciting topic for you today around important things in recognition that are gonna be really helpful for you um, as you navigate the next few weeks and, and months. Um, so let me go through a couple of housekeeping items with you and then I wanna introduce Roy. Um, first off, we know that you have some burning questions that you wanna ask and we'd love for you to use the Q&A chat function, the Q&A function rather, uh, to ask those. Um, we do have some questions that we'll start off with. However, we'd love for you as we continue this session for you to be able to ask your questions. Um, second, this is being recorded, so we'll make sure that everyone has access to the recording after the session today. Um, so without further ado, Roy, very excited to have you here today uh, to share your expertise. Roy is the author of Practicing Recognition how to give meaningful recognition to people every day. Uh, Roy is the company's uh, chief learning officer and recognition expert, and he's been practicing in the field for 24 years. Uh, so Roy, we're really excited to, to have you. Good to be here. Absolutely. Um, and last, before we get started, I wanna thank our customers for joining in today. So we have some, uh, some customers from engage to excel and Rideau, and we very much appreciate your, your business and your partnership. All right, so let's get started. And, and again, please don't be shy about using that Q&A function. We'll kick things off with some questions that Roy, I know you get uh, all the time. Yes. Uh, and this first one is something that, uh, you know, I've certainly uh, seen quite a bit Let's talk about recognition versus appreciation. I get that question all the time. What's the difference between recognition and appreciation? All right, that's a good one. I remember when I first started in the field of employee recognition and I would go into organizations because usually because of say an engagement survey found recognition to be low. So they bring me in and I would ask, so you're doing recognition, but is it real recognition? And they went, what's real recognition? And they panicked and I, and I had to come up with an answer and I didn't have a definition at the time. So I, I had to work on that and I defined real recognition as any thought, word or deed towards, you know, recognizing, appreciating someone for who they are and recognizing them for what they do. And you know, appreciation and recognition are brothers and sisters on that continuum. They're right, right near that end where it's very relational and it's very intangible in nature. And the, the dilemma happens is that I think they're like a bit of a Venn diagram where they start to overlap a little bit. So you have a little bit more recognition on one side, a little bit more appreciation on one side, but they do overlap. And what I like to consider recognition is, is more for the doing and appreciation is a lot more for the being, you know, we, yeah. we you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, do we appreciate people for who they are? Do we appreciate, you know, their backgrounds, their education, the uh, behind the scenes efforts that they put in just to show up for work, for example, and do the things mm -hmm. that we're doing. Whereas recognition is a little bit more, performance oriented, it's much more behavioral, it's looking at the actions that they do. And so it's important to kind of just separate, are we appreciating our people in general? Is there a kind of an attitude of gratitude as we sometimes hear around regard, how we regard people? And then when they are doing things, that's when we recognize them. And I think sometimes we have this uh, dilemma where people perceive recognition as strictly performance oriented. And it is a lot of that, 
but it also should be more behavioral and effort in the contributions we make. So they are close, uh, but I think if you think of appreciation being more about being and recognition being more about doing, kind of helps to delineate a little bit. No, I think that's really helpful. And I love that, uh, I love that quote, appreciating people for who they are, recognizing people for, for what they do. So that's yeah. great. Um, another question I think very much top of mind is, you know, how do you make recognition meaningful for remote workers? We've got a lot of uh, folks working remotely right now who I'm sure are thinking about new and exciting ways to, to make recognition meaningful for remote folks. Can you talk about that? Sure. I think sometimes we've gotten a little bit uh, caught up with this challenge around the remoteness because in, if anything, it's the greatest opportunity to give, as you've just heard me define, real recognition. This is, this is all about connecting with people. And when I think about, you know, giving recognition to even our remote employees now, especially many of them now having to be, you know, in a sense, forced to, to work from home, it's connecting. It's making sure that we do regular connections. And then when we do, it's the active listening to what people are doing. We, we need to have those one-on-one. -on -one. They should have been going on all the time, but we need to have those one-on-ones where we're finding out what someone is working on. And when we do hear that, that's when we use the practices of recognition that are so meaningful. And I know you've, you've heard me talk about before, Jeff, about the two-part specificity rule. It's a fancy term, but it's, it's looking at the action that's been done. So when we're giving recognition, don't use the good job well done. Those are trite and they don't mean anything. And when we say specifically what someone has done, the action, the behavior, the effort that's been made, and then the second part is make a statement about the impact that that action has made uh, on you, on a customer, towards the organization. So when we phrase our recognition in that way, it's number one, they, they know that we've identified what they're doing. So they know we care and that we're listening and we're observing. But when we give that impact statement, all of a sudden it allows the individual to feel that they've got a purpose. It's a connection to the goals, the organization, to a customer. And often we, don't, we do things, but we don't necessarily know that it's having an impact. We, we just do it. And when someone tells us it had an impact, it's like, whoa, I never even thought of that. This is cool. It comes across as sincere and authentic. And I think this regular connection is key, it, whether it be the email, the phone call, and of course, just like we're doing here, you know, the video conferencing. I think we've got to do a lot more face-to-face -face connections for people to feel there are human beings out there when they're stuck at home uh, without anybody. I've been, I've been working from a home office for 24 years now, so I'm used to this. Um, but I think a lot of these people are not going to be used to this. And I think we need to make sure we're scheduling in time to connect. Uh, Jeff, you know, Tim is, creates a, a weekly huddle, as he calls it. Uh, and I, in fact, I'm having that right after our call today. So I report to Tim and Tim's going to have that call. It's happening every week. That's kind of cool. And one of the ways in which I find Tim is helping me to feel recognized, because I don't necessarily need a lot of praise or accolades, but receiving an assignment to go do something that's within my expertise and something that I enjoy doing, it's kind of, oh, wow, this is a good challenge. Things like that will help, I think, connect the people who are now working from home with the greater cause of the organization, with our customers. And just don't forget to use the two-part specificity rule every single time. No, I think that's really good advice, Roy. And I think that you're right. A lot of us are familiar with using, you know, FaceTime or our phones in our, in our personal lives. But when it comes to work, um, you know, we're not always accustomed to using some of the video tools. So right. this is a yeah. great example of, of how to connect yes. with remote workers during this time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, just want to remind folks to, to use the Q&A function. So if you have questions or even just clarifying questions as we're chatting, feel free to use the Q&A window. Um, the next question, boy, I know a lot of times you get 
questions around frequency. So I think oh. the two-part specificity rule is great. What sort of advice do you have to folks that are saying, what's the right frequency to give recognition? Right. This is a question that we do get asked a lot. And what's interesting about this question is, is it's implying that there is a, a blanket, this is how often you must do it. And while certainly the Gallup organization on their Q12 survey tool asked the question, you know, in the last seven days, you know, have you received praise or recognition for doing good work? It's a good gauge. It's a good gauge. I mean, at least to ask that question, you find out how many people have been recognized uh, in those past seven days. So that's a good marker. But I don't think it necessarily implies that each individual we work with should receive recognition every seven days. So the key here, I think, is ask. Like for myself, I just shared earlier, Jeff, that you know, I don't necessarily need to receive a lot of recognition all the time. I don't think I necessarily receive it every week. So I don't feel unrecognized. But I would hate to be putting in a lot of time and effort into a cause, a project, whatever, and nothing be said. A lot of employees say to me, uh, I, I might not get recognized or rewarded until a project is completed. And what they're saying to me, they'd like to receive recognition along the way. They'd like to, to be acknowledged for the work they're doing. So there's, sometimes I think rewards should be when something's done and, and then recognition should be for that doing. But each person is different. And this is where we get into a, a bit of a, uh, wanting a template for saying, how frequent should I recognize every single employee? and then starting to log in on our computer calendars when we're going to recognize everyone. No, recognition should be much more spontaneous. When we, if we have connection opportunities, we're going to hear great things being done. And when we hear those great things being done, hey, guess what? We give recognition. Absolutely. So, yeah. So we I don't get so caught up on the time barrier, but I would say, ask yourself, when was the last time I recognized Jeff? Whoa, it's been a while. I've got to be more mindful to give recognition more frequently. So I think the frequency is more on us to be able to acknowledge what an employee wants and then to monitor, are we recognizing our people? That's great. Um, and we did have a question come in, Roy. If you could just cover again, the, I think there was some interest in that two-part specificity rule. All right. You could just cover that one more time for folks. I think there was some interest in hearing that. Oh, great. I'm glad, actually, because I think this is a, a grand fundamental for giving more meaningful recognition. You and I know that we have grown up with this good job, well done lines, whether you were a kid or whether you're an adult now in the workforce. And the irony is, because I study around the meaning of words, the semantics, the psychology around things, the word good is actually a neutral word. There are positive words, there are negative words, and there are neutral words right in the meaning, meaning middle. And the word good is neutral. It's not a powerful word. So we've just, we've just kind of given lousy recognition by using the word good. And then job. What does that mean? I've got a job, but what did I just do that's a job? No, I did something very, very specific. I just completed a task. I submitted a report. I got that shipment out earlier than was expected. That's what I did. That's not a job. My job's the title, but the work I just did. So using the terms good job doesn't cut it. It doesn't register a lot. People go, well, they nod, they smile, but what did, I, what did I just get recognized for? You know, they're questioning it, right? Absolutely. So now we get into the two-part specificity. What I'm suggesting is that you have kind of like two phrases or sentences when you're giving recognition. The first one describes the action, and I use action as a cue, as a kind of a simple way to remember that my first part of my statement needs to have action focused. So I'm going to be looking at the uh, behavior that was done, the value that was lived, the 
positive effort that was done, contribution made, and I'm going to describe that. So, you know, I can draw upon Melissa and say, hey, Melissa, I really love that uh, graphic, uh, what do you call those things now? I even graphic printout that was sent out recently about the COVID virus. Um, and, and, I, I, and I know that I've sent it out to people and it's already had some impact on people because they're commenting on me on how much they appreciated it right away. So you've got the action statement and then you give the impact statement. Now I used the word impact in there. I didn't mean to, but we're doing this live spontaneous. But you could say how um, I really think this is going to make a difference to our customers. This is really going to help our employees, whatever. So you have an action statement and an impact statement. And what's wonderful, because people often say they don't have time to give recognition. If you use a good action statement and a good impact statement, it's probably going to be no longer than 14 seconds. So you're giving much more meaningful recognition and people believe it. I've heard a lot of people use the action statements when they're giving recognition. Not a lot of people use an impact statement. And it's the impact statement that allows employees to feel that this is genuine, this is sincere, this is authentic recognition. Uh, that's being given. No, that's a very, very helpful way. Great. Well, there you have it. Two part specificity. Um, we have a question here in the chat function. So thank you, Shannon, for asking a question. Do you have any tips or suggestions for organizations that are moving to more of a team based recognition and adding in more individual recognition? How do you do this without making some individuals feel unrecognized? Ooh, okay. Well, there is a, I, I'm not a sports person. Jeff, are you a sports person? I like the Red Sox and the Patriots. But All right. So you, you've got more. You've got, it's questionable. All right. You're a fan. At least you're a fan. I'm not even into being a fan, but I'm going to use a little bit of sports analogy here uh, to help uh, explain about team recognition. Number one, when you give team recognition, you recognize the whole team for what they were doing. You can still use the two-part specificity part by being very clear on what the team's contribution has been. And like a team sport, one team wins, one team doesn't. So you have the highest score, the, you know, it's the best of the best, right? And so you acknowledge that. Now I've had some people ask, well, yeah, but what if you have a team player who doesn't really put in much effort? And, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, and when you get that bad apple on a team, you know, it, people really dislike it. In fact, they even feel that when they get the team recognition, that it's almost getting a little sour on the recognition because they're saying, ah, oh, but Joe over here, he's getting recognized in that whole collective recognition and he doesn't deserve it. So now the recognition isn't seen as being real, being meaningful to them because there's a bad player on the team. And I've been very candid about this with different organizations that if you have a team player like that, they shouldn't be on the team. And I'm being blunt here. You know what I'm saying? It's like they shouldn't right. be on the team. You wouldn't have it in a sports team. If someone's a lousy player, they, they, get, they get booted off the team, right? They're not there. So now we've got, as long as we've got a good, strong team, then it's collective. And then what else do they do in sports? I've noticed the odd times I do watch a hockey game or whatever, uh, that they have, you know, the most valuable player, the all-star person. There is no doubt that there's in certain individuals that guess what? In that game, that project, they really shone. They, they stood out. And that's when you say, and I'd like to make special acknowledgement of Jeff doing X, Y, Z to make this team project a success. But always start with the team first. And if you need to, if you're a little concerned, you can now just acknowledge each individual for their contribution uh, towards the outcome that the team had. So I, I, first I'd say, make sure you've got a good team because if there's a lousy player, that's gonna negate the recognition. People start saying, yeah, right, you know, 
they, they, they just get negative about it. So start with a good team. Remember to recognize the whole team. And then if there are star players on that project, that initiative, then acknowledge them for it. Okay, great. Awesome. Got another question that I wanted to ask you, Roy, around how do you encourage and promote peer-to-peer -peer recognition, non-managerial recognition okay. among peers? What are some best practices for really boosting that? Well, that's a good one. When I think about peer-to-peer -peer recognition, certainly we know, I think over 40% of organizations have social recognition programs, which is kind of like a a la Facebook behind your firewall, uh, which for example, E2E &E provides, and, and it's allow, allowing us to uh, give people a platform where they can acknowledge their peers. But even social recognition programs are only as good as the communication and training that's given. I think first off, we need to set an expectation that we want everybody to recognize one another. And one of the ways we can do that besides face-to-face -face is through whatever online tools that we might have that makes it more visible. And what's cool, like Facebook, is that our social recognition uh, programs allow other people to comment on the recognition you might give to a friend and a colleague. And, and then I would also suggest that one way to encourage more recognition is it's okay to like a comment that someone has put up in acknowledging one of their peers. But I would also say, add a comment. Don't just leave it with the like alone. I think every time you hit like, add a comment, because that then uh, gives you the, you know why you're acknowledging it. That's why you hit the like, but add something, say something. That's going to spark things on. So we need to teach people these things. So set the expectation, uh, set out the communication uh, on a regular basis have the managers encourage uh, their staff to, to go on, uh, depending on the work nature of the work, you know, to go on perhaps at a certain time of day. Uh, sometimes it's cool to go on first thing because you can remember from things from the day before. And sometimes it's good towards the end of the day to take maybe just five, 10 minutes because the social recognition programs don't take that long. The other part with peer-to-peer -peer recognition is, and it's the same for managers, but we, we just don't let employees know some of these things that we're giving resources and tools to managers because we tend to have thought of recognition being top down and recognition is, should be multi-directional. It should be from all people to all levels of employees. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure they know how to give recognition because if we just told you the two-part specificity rule and we do training, it's often for managers, you know, we need to make employees know these skills. They, they're not confident either. They're, they're, they're saying good job and well done to their kids on the sports team, you know, after work. So we, we get caught up with the generic phrases. We need to teach people the specifics of what they need to do. Uh, and, you know, in pre-shift meetings, you know, huddles, whatever we have, we can start off ourselves as a manager and leader, uh, giving recognition to someone, and then we can invite uh, our, our staff to uh, acknowledge other people too. So all kinds of different ways, it's gotta be suited to the nature of the context of the work, but let's encourage everyone to give recognition and don't let it be perceived as just being a top-down phenomenon. Yeah, that's really helpful. And I really like what you mentioned too about not just liking, but commenting. Yes. Um, to amplify the experience. Exactly. And you see people start to comment it makes other people want to to add in and then it becomes uh, a really positive experience for that individual so i think that's that's great advice you mentioned the manager uh roy and certainly the role of the manager is important uh in employee recognition how do you get managers and supervisors bought in to the idea of recognition recognizing that some for some folks uh you know it is a a skill that needs to be learned mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you get manager supervisor buy-in? Well, you've asked you you've stated two points that uh, you know, I love words, and so when I hear these different words, it kind of boom boom. So you used two things, and that was buy-in. And I'm personally against using the term buy-in for this reason: when it's buy-in, 
it's always looked at recognition and rewards as a monetary decision. I either give money or I don't give money towards this, whether it be programs, whether it be rewards. So buy-in needs to be replaced with the word commitment. How can I get the personal commitment of managers to give better and more frequent recognition? Ooh, now we kind of putting the onus on the individual themselves rather than it's a, it's a tangible thing of, of called money, you know? So mm -hmm. now they have to start being held accountable for giving recognition. And that's a big piece. We need to hold people accountable. And then you said that many of these managers haven't learned to give recognition. And that's our saving grace right now because recognition can be learned by anyone and everyone. It's true, Jeff. A lot of people have risen to the position of a manager just because of technical, professional competency, not necessarily because of people skills. So we can't blame managers and we can't guilt managers. We need to uh, provide them with the abilities. I'm just reading uh, BJ Fogg's book right now called Tiny Habits. And he has that the behavior comes from motivation plus ability plus prompt. And he says to start working on this, you have to start with a prompt. You know, what, what can you do to prompt people about giving recognition? Well, I, I just start off with something like, uh, start writing down great things that you see happening every day. You don't even have to give recognition. I just want you to create a logbook on your phone, computer, paper-based, start noting all the great things that people do at work. Don't have to say anything to anyone. This is to help build awareness. There's a lot of good things going on. Wow, there's more things going on than I thought. So here's a prompt when I see, so hey, you and I, we travel a lot. We go to the airport and we hear the TSA public announcement. If you see something, say something. And that's the kind of key. We want to get you into that mindset. If you see something, say something. But first of all, first prompt might be just to note great things going on. Then we get into the ability part. And that's giving people the skills, the tools to learn how to give great recognition. Giving you an example today with the two-part specificity rule. And then, then the motivation is not this guilt of, you know, you're not giving recognition, people. You gotta go out there and give more recognition. That's not gonna change people, it never does. But if I now start learning how to give recognition the right way, if I'm starting to see the prompts for seeing something, say something. And now what if I record that I gave recognition to Jeff and I record afterwards, and Jeff smiled at me after I gave him recognition. Or Jeff said, thank you. And Jeff reacted in a positive way. Now I record the recipient's feelings. And now I record, and how did I feel after I gave that recognition? It felt pretty good. I might've been a little awkward with it, but it was kind of neat. That's what motivation, when we feel something, we start changing. Uh -huh. And that's the kind of motivation we need to look at. So I love, uh, again, Tiny Habits, if you want to learn more, uh, by BJ Fogg, he's a professor. And uh, just looking at that whole map, motivation, ability, and prompt, but start with a prompt, look at your abilities, give people the abilities, and then let them feel the motivation and that will encourage greater change in the long term. Yeah, and building off of a couple of things you said, Roy, I think you said an important thing, which is um, you can't guilt managers, right? You can't make them feel bad. You need to encourage managers, and by leading by example, um, and you know, doing things like starting off every meeting with what are some good things that are happening? What are some shout outs that are happening? There's positivity all around and to be able to highlight those moments is very important. Um, so that's some good advice. We do have a uh, question that's come in from the Q&A. Um, what can employers do to keep employees engaged during the time that we are all working from home? 
Where can we find good resources on virtual appreciation ideas? Uh, we don't want to miss any of the little things. Can you recommend anything? Um, so I'm going to have you chime in, Roy, and then I'm going to also mention a couple resources that we've. Uh, I was going to say same thing. I'm glad you're going to do that, Jeff, because I would have piped up if you hadn't. Uh, so yes, it's the connecting piece, people have got to feel that there's human beings they're working with even when they don't see them. And I think that there's a loneliness that can occur if you're not used to doing this. For myself, and, and there's some self-initiation things that people need to do. You, as, a, as a worker from home now, you need to plan in reaching out to your colleagues. Uh, I have a colleague on the, on the West Coast and last Friday, I made sure I reached out to her. Just two things. One was, yeah, I haven't heard from anybody in a while. So I'll reach out to, to Lindsay. And it was good to hear what she was working on, what I was working on. And the irony was, because of what we were both doing, we found there was a little bit of overlap. And we knew that we could combine our efforts to help our clients. That would never have happened if I hadn't made that call. So there's both managers and supervisors calling employees. And I want to kind of give permission to anyone who might not have thought of doing this to make sure they plan in some time to personally reach out to colleagues. It doesn't have to be your supervisor or manager. It can be just a peer that you know is working from home. So plan those things in. I think it's looking at your email etiquette a little bit more carefully and making sure that you're using the person's name rather than just starting off with a phrase or a request. I think it's saying, I'm very grateful for your help, or I thank you for making this. This is going to help me do X, Y, Z. I think it's kind of expanding our appreciation, gratitude, and recognition in our emails so that people feel that there's a little bit more of uh, humanity within written text. So, and that's the same thing with using recognition programs, making sure again, two-part specificity, uh, passing on, sharing, connecting with other people too. Uh, this is when CCs are good. Uh, I don't know about you, sometimes I go, why are all these people being CC'd? But when you're giving recognition, I think it's important, especially since we work from home and we don't see one another, we don't hear it all the time, that we expand the uh, visibility of recognition uh, where we can. So those are just a few ideas, unless there's anything more that you'd like to add, to Jeff. No, I think that's great. And um, Engage to Excel recently published a, a piece on 10 ways to recognize your changing workforce. It's a it's an asset that we recently produced amid uh, this COVID pandemic to really help organizations uh, make that transition and give some tips around things that they can do for not just their remote folks, but for, for everybody. Yeah. And Melissa, one of the things that I would suggest in light of that question is that we, we make sure that everybody attending today get a copy of that. Uh, that would be great. I will, I'll make sure. Perfect. So, and I'm just thinking too, if, we, if there's a couple, another article I wrote too on my blog at authenticrecognition.com. So you can find uh, those resources from last week as well. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Roy. Um, another question, what's the best way to engage and recognize offline employees? So we've talked about remote workers, but we do have a, a big percentage of our population who is not in front of a PC or you know, connected to a smartphone regularly during their shift, um, what are some best practices to engage, recognize, uh, and connect with those offline employees, many of which are so important uh, right now? So if you could give some, some of your thoughts there, Roy, we'd appreciate it. Sure. This is getting down to basics here, Jeff, because depending on the context of the work environment, I'm thinking of, you know, the grocery stores right now, you know, and you might see the plexiglass between you and the, and the clerk, uh, you know, it's making sure that they receive uh, acknowledgement from their 
uh, managers and supervisors, you know, before perhaps in a pre-shift meeting, uh, giving great examples of things that they've observed, uh, using good old bulletin boards and posting up notes and allowing us all to put notes up of thanks. I'm certainly seeing if you have as well, Jeff, that, you know, when I go to the stores and it's, it's been infrequent, I think that we went, my wife and I went this week and it's been the first time in three weeks that we went into a grocery store. It's a different experience now, but I've not noticed that more of the shoppers are acknowledging the grocery clerks for what they're doing, for the sacrifice they're making, for doing all that they're doing that's got to be uplifting for them as well. So you've got the spoken word, you've got printed words, you've got meetings, huddles, and, you know, different work contexts, you know, like could be a factory. And again, people are on the floor and you don't want to disrupt uh, workflows that could create lack of safety. Um, so you really need to kind of you know, leave a note, say, come see me when you're done, done this project or end of shift or whatever, and just build in those moments for connecting and thanking people. And it's acknowledging people for like showing up. Like that's where the appreciation comes in, right? Uh, rather than just always thinking it has to be recognition for doing something. But some of the doings that are going on is just showing up every day. And it's like, if you didn't say anything at all, during someone's work tenure, they would feel like they're being taken for granted. They may not be the outstanding performers, produce significant results, but they're doing their work. And if we don't acknowledge them, we just don't, we don't stop sometimes and say, hey, Mike, I really wanna appreciate you just being just one of the reliable staff around here. Just keep showing up and doing the job day in, day out. If I haven't said so before, I just wanna thank you for, for what you're doing. So it's basics. When you can't, don't have people with emails, if you don't have people that have connection to technology, this is the face-to-face, -face, the written, the displaying, whatever recognition we can create. Uh, and uh, yeah, you have to be a little bit more creative. You have to make sure you're making time for this because it's easy to neglect, but you've got to do it because otherwise people won't feel valued. Yeah, I think you mentioned some really important points there, Roy. And last night, I, I did have to go to the grocery store to pick up a few more things. And there were just a few folks working, mm -hmm. and the lines were really long. And when I got to the checkout, um, the clerk seemed pretty, pretty defeated, uh, pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty sad look on her face. And I just, I thanked her. Uh, and, and told her how much I appreciate all that she's doing during a very difficult time. And you could see her face start to, to smile a bit. And you're right, those words of encouragement to those on the front lines now, especially, so, so important. Very much so. Um, just a reminder, folks, uh, continue to use the, the Q&A function for any additional questions that you have. Um, next one is around global rollout. So. Mm -hmm have a lot of uh, clients here at engage to excel who have a global diverse uh, base. When you think about cultural differences, when you think about countries having different practices, can you talk to us for a little bit about your experience in really understanding how to do, you know, communication, how to do programs uh, in, in different parts of the world and what you've learned uh, from that. Yeah, you bring back some memories for me. I've had the opportunity of speaking and training, consulting in, in 14 countries around the world, uh, obviously North America, uh, UK, uh, Western Europe, um, Middle East, India. And it's a different experience. It really is. It really is a different experience. But the commonality is that we're all people. And that's what I always had to keep in mind. We're all people first. And that the, ironically, when I worked with them, each group of people that I worked with in each country could also say that culture was a barrier to giving good recognition. So there can be ethnic culture, there can be organizational culture. Is often 
creates the barriers for giving good recognition. In each country, all employees were saying they wanted to be recognized, but it wasn't happening for different reasons. Um, so there are societal norms that get created in each country and it doesn't mean they're right. It's just how things have evolved, been brought up. I had in Germany, I, I'm just thinking of an example in Germany. I can't do justice, I don't speak German, but when I was presenting there, one manager stood up and said, you know, I'm thinking of an old German quote. And, and they said, for Roy's benefit, I'll translate it into English. And it said, to not shout loudly is enough praise. In other words, if you got shouted at a lot, that was typical of the German culture, which was more rule bound, uh, more un uh, according to Geert Hofstede's uh, cultural analysis, he, he would say that their uh, uncertainty avoidance, they, they, do, they are, do not want risk, so they're much more rule bound, more strict, uh, he uses the term masculinity. So there are different cultures that are more male versus female-like in, in the broad definitions that he's using. So Germans would be more male, rule-bound, and you, you hear more negatives than you would positives. So to not shout loudly is enough recognition. Now, he acknowledged that being a problem, but he said that's what they've grown up with it's still necessitated awareness building on the good things that are going on. It's still required awareness building of those abilities, those skills for giving better recognition. And I always do a kind of a, a transfer of learning ex exercise where we hold people accountable for 30 days to actually practice whatever behaviors they want to choose to give better recognition. And they all, every country noticed that it was easier, it was better, it was received well, and I got better at giving recognition. Mm -hmm. So we can all learn to give better recognition. Now, um, obviously there's also individuality culture and there's collectivism culture. So North America, we're much more individualistic. So our recognition tends to be more one-on-one. -on -one. Asian cultures are more collective mindset. So it would be uh, an affront to single out an individual and they look at more the team, the group. And so that recognition is more generally given that way. But it still requires those positive behaviors, uh, the skill sets. You still have to give it the right way. And I'm all about, you know, learning to give real recognition the right way wherever you work. And so you need to find out what the right way is, learn to do that. And, and yes, you have to juggle the cultures a little bit. So for example, you know, I often teach about the power of making eye contact and smiling when you're giving great recognition. But in some of the Asian cultures to make eye contact is, is not appropriate. So you need to look down. So you need to kind of acknowledge, you need to find out, let the people in those countries teach you. Um, but when you're looking at your program offerings, it's kind of like you can still do that. You can still send an e-card to a team if it's a more collective mindset. Or you can do it individually if you have a more individualistic mindset of a culture. So social norms are there. Cultural behaviors are there. They were learned. It doesn't mean to say they're right. And so in an organization, you can set an expectation for what you would like to achieve and make sure you're listening to employees rather than imposing views and start creating and evolving how recognition should look in your organization or in that culture, culture or that country uh, where recognition is. Respect it, definitely, but teach and set expectations for the right behaviors that will be meaningfully received. That's great. Yeah, I think the the listening, especially to folks on the ground, very, very important as you think about uh, global recognition programs. But to your point, uh, it may not uh, influence how you ultimately roll out a collective program, but you know, you, it's important to do that groundwork, to do that listening, 
to be aware. Um, so that's some really good advice. Thank you, Roy. Mm -hmm. um, how about what are some best practices to sustain recognition? One of the, the challenges that we see from time to time is that a, a program uh, rolls out, has a great communication strategy around it, but for whatever reason, there's, there's some uh, you know, lack of uh, engagement and they're looking to reignite that. Um, mm -hmm. Things that you've done to really help sustain that level of engagement within a program. Yeah, I think I, I like rhyming, alliteration, words. So I, I think a program goes live and then you're striving to, to kind of make sure it gets connected and implemented properly. And then you're trying to drive it thoroughly. But then the, if you're not keeping those things going, then all of a sudden you might be starting to dive and then you have to revive. Um, one of the things I see that people do with recognition programs, it's like they, they feel like they have to go to Walmart and they buy a recognition program, they bring it home and they plug it in and they go, it's not working, it's not working. And they forget that this is where leaders and managers really come in. As much as we want employees to be giving recognition to, this is a leadership and a management setting a standard and expectation example of using these programs. So there are seven reasons why people don't do things. And one is no expectations. So if you don't set an expectation to use these programs, nothing's going to happen. It'll just sit there. The second is, you know, no feedback. If we don't give feedback to people on their use or lack of use of programs, nothing's going to change. Uh, so it's nice to set the expectation and we get the, you know, mandate from on high CEO, you know, we've got a great recognition program, go out and use it. And then nobody says anything to anyone about using it or not using it. The third reason why people don't do things is they're not provided the training or the education. So no educational training on how to use the programs. Uh, no resources, whether that be the money, the time to use it or whatever. Then we get into that odd uh, recognition and reward categories, which is sometimes we get punished for doing the right things. So all of a sudden, Mary over here is using the program and her manager peers are saying, oh, you're trying to suck up to the boss, huh? Using the program. So it's a, ne it's, it's a negative for doing the right thing. And then sometimes we get rewarded for doing the wrong things. And what's coming to mind right now is uh, a safety program. And I know that OSHA has, has stopped this kind of thing, but I saw it in, at, on a, in a power company where all the employees, all the employees were getting $50 gift cards if their division, department, whatever, submitted a zero accident safety report. I want you to think about that. So no accident report. If we send a no accident report, we all get a $50 gift card. So guess what we were rewarding? We were rewarding a zero accident report card, even if there were accidents going on. Like, don't, don't mention that. We'll, we'll, we'll put in the report. We'll all get 50 bucks. You got a cut. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. Instead of rewarding, you know, safe practices, right? So these are ways in which we, and then of course the last seventh reason is you ignore either, just ignoring, all right? So those are seven reasons why people don't do things. And I, I really think it's important that we also build in a kind of a quality improvement process as well. A recognition program, a recognition and reward program is not gonna be successful for the long time if we're not refining things, if we're not looking for where there are gaps, where there are problems, and continually working on those, identifying you know, factors that might contribute to the problems, hearing firsthand, as you've said, ground floor, listen to the employees, um, and constantly communicating and educating 
uh, not only about recognition practices, but also how to use recognition programs effectively. So it's, it's a lot of work. It's not just uh -huh. plug it in and it's good to go. It's, it's got to be something that's kept alive. And uh, I hope that people will, will work hard on continually improving their programs, whether it's an in-house program or whether you're working with a vendor uh, to how, how we make this better. And that's a whole program utilization. You know, like how, do we, how do we use recognition better? How do we make sure people are redeeming their points or rewards or gifts? How can we make it better? That's a quality improvement process. No, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, and we've got just enough time for one or two more questions. So if you do have anything else uh, that you'd like to add, use the Q&A function. Um, so you talked about sustaining the program, sustaining engagement. What about measuring its effectiveness? Um, that's a question that we get a lot, Roy, which is how do you measure the program's effectiveness? Can you talk about that? Sure. It's interesting. I was just on a call uh, with one of our colleagues the other day with a client and we asked them how do they intend, what's their hope for managing uh, or rather measuring the success of their recognition and reward program. And their immediate response was usage. And usage is okay. It's the, it's the basic measurement of how well, you know, we're, using gift cards, how well we're sending out e-cards, how well we're going on to a social recognition platform and making comments of, of praise and acknowledging people. That's usage. And it's interesting when you get into the reward paradigm as well, sometimes rewards create a bit of an entitlement mentality and, and usage of rewards can be gained, unfortunately, if it's not monitored and taught how to use properly. So usage on its own isn't a good metric in isolation. I believe, you know, the recognition outputs that we have from our programs are great, but it's also important to get employee input as well. Not just satisfaction. Uh, I think it's both satisfaction and their perception of how recognized they feel. And we certainly have tools within our programs that allow our clients to be able to measure uh, the perception uh, of recognition. And then I think it's good to be able to integrate and correlate, you know, the measurements of, that you have from the program, the measurement of perception of satisfaction from employees with your own performance data. So what key performance metrics do you want to correlate recognition with? so that we can show you that if you give recognition properly, if you give it well, if you've learned how to give better recognition, that your performance results will improve. So employee engagement scores are good as long as I think you drill down more on your managers, on how they're giving recognition, rather than letting your questions or items on a survey be company specific all the time. I think mm -hmm. we need to drill down. Uh, on the manager, uh, maybe do some pulse checks if we have to, if you can't change the questions on your survey because it's a, you know, a commercial tool. Uh, but if, if you have opportunity to do some pulse checks and dive down, dig down, uh, then you might get more information as to how you can improve. I think finally, I think I would say, you know, all those program outputs are great but they're lagging indicators. I mean, they're like six months, a year later, whatever period of time you're looking at. Uh, same with engagement surveys, you know, they're a year later. Uh, they're, they're, they're easy to measure, but they're hard to change. Whereas we need leading indicators, which are um, hard to measure, but easy to influence. So for example, a leading indicator that I like teaching people to do is Increase the number of interactions you have with an employee. Hey, um, it's not that hard to do. And if I just tally how many interactions I have with my employees, I can improve that. And what I can guarantee is that the more interactions you have with your employees, the more things you're going to hear about, more things you're going to observe, therefore more chances for giving great recognition. Absolutely, that is a great uh, final comment to end on. So 
Uh, Roy, I can't believe how quickly the, the hour is on, but uh, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. It's been really valuable and uh, gives us some good reflection, right, as we go back and, and, uh, and, and think about things a little bit differently uh, in how we approach recognition. Uh, so I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you as well, Melissa. Um, we very much appreciate you organizing this webinar for all of us. So I just want to thank you both. Thank you. We we'll have to do this again. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. I look forward to it. And thank you so much um, for our customers who have joined in. We recognize that it's a, a very busy time. Uh, there's certainly a lot going on, a lot of uncertainty. So hopefully you've got some good nuggets today that you can take back to your, uh, to your workforce. Um, just a reminder, uh, it will be recorded. It has been recorded as well. So Melissa will make sure that everybody gets access to the recording. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Stay healthy, safe, and be well. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.